Hello everybody, welcome back to Middleport Junction. I'm Anthony and this is the second part of me trying and attempting to um, solder some um, point motors or point uh, solenoids onto, onto my layout. I did initially start using um, Pico PL10 point motors, which I'd bought second hand off a well-known auction site. I then purchased some extending rods to to so that the so that the rods would protrude up through the baseboard because I've got quite a thick baseboard. Um, unfortunately, no matter what I tried, um, things didn't work out and things didn't happen. So I ended up scrapping um, the idea of using Pico's PL10s, and I went down the Gauge Master route. So I've got a Gauge Master. I think the GM2 or PM2. Um, so I've used those and I've been successful with that. So um, enjoy the video. See you soon. So as already mentioned, um, I decided not to use the Pico PL10 because I was having issues with the extending rod. And so what I've done is I've gone out and purchased the Gauge Master PM2 point motor instead. And this comes fitted with uh, an, a longer pin. So I don't need to extend this, but as it's a new point motor. So there it is, this is the, the Gauge Master one. Very similar to the Pico one. And all I've done is I've wired exactly the same as I did in the previous video um, with the switch wires and the feed here. So I've got three, um, three wires connected there. And so now I'm looking to wire these onto, into the capacitor discharge unit, which is this. And also, I need to be connecting the switch wires onto the onto the toggle switch, which is this. So, I'll do that now. So, for the power wire, uh, which will feed the switch, I'm using green this time. And, as always, I'm going to start by tinning the end of each wire. there we have all four wires tinned and now you'll notice on the switch that there are three terminals there and each of these cables are going to be soldered to the center of each switch So on each wire, um, especially at the switch end, I want to make sure that there's no bare wire showing. And so just here, I'm applying a little bit of heat shrink, just trying to get that to focus. I'm just gonna apply a little bit of heat shrink to each wire at the switch end. So you simply feed on a little piece, a little tube, this is two millimeter, um, heat shrink and simply heat it with the soldering iron and it does what it's was the name suggests it just shrinks onto the wire onto the terminal <clears throat> I'm 
And so that should make a nice tight fit so that it doesn't slide about. I'll do that for the rest of the wires. And so there's all four switches done with each centre wire protected with the heat shrink. So now I'm going to uh, connect the red and the white switch wires to the switch. But before I do that, because one side is already connected to the point motor, I need to make sure that I add the heat, the, sh the heat shrink before I solder them to the switch. So here we are under the baseboard now and these three point motors here are now in situ. They've all been drilled and screwed into place. Uh, the wiring will be tidied up shortly. So I've got three point motors here and I've got a point motor there. So as you put the point motors in you have to make sure that each rod is in place as well. don't know if you can see that the rod is protruding through here to switch that point there's another one here and there's another one there so they have to be nice and loose um, so that so that they can switch the point that's like so so this key press i bought from the range and i've taken out the hooks and drilled a couple of holes here in the back of it for my wiring to go in and then in the front I've drilled holes for my switches so I'm going to use this box um, purely to um, house the, de the capacitor discharge unit and any other wiring is going to be inside there and I've got room for switches um, on the outside as well.
So here we are then, this is the control panel that I've made so far with the toggle switches and it's all wired up now and so inside here are all the switches, the capacitor discharge unit and all the point motors are now wired up. So I'm just testing them at the moment. As you can see, no problem with that one. That one's okay. that one's okay. This one isn't working for some reason so I just need to check the wiring on that. Right so I'm at the stage now where I'm cutting these extension these extending pins um, from the point motor. So the rods, just, these are the ones that switch the points. And obviously you don't want them that long, so I'm trying to cut them down. You can use a Dremel, um, or I'm just using a pair of pliers just to cut. Oh, that's one. And the Right, so the cutting using the, the wire cutters, to be honest, is quite brutal. Um, but it's done the job. It's, it's made it shorter, um, which is what I want. So what I'll do now is I'll just test the points again, just to make sure all of these work. I'll do that now. So at last, um, we've come to the end of that section. Um, I'm no expert at soldering and I'm certainly no expert at, uh, at wiring either. Um, but but I just like to have a go and um, I'm quite pleased with the results. Managed to do my own switching box and I've managed to get the points to work. Um, so yeah, overall quite pleased with that. So. Um, if you're new, please subscribe to the channel and give me a thumbs up, please. That'd be, uh, that'd be great. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video very soon. Bye for now.